Good morning, isang mapag Palang umaga po sa ating lahat in Ilocano na imbagngal daw tayo amin in Bisaya, maayong buntag. On behalf of the Development Academy of the Philippines, I would like to welcome all of you to the online learning session on Information Security Management System. My name is Kay and I will be your moderator for today. This is a very exciting day for us in the Academy as we have received an overwhelming number of registrations for this online learning session. So right now we have 40 participants on Cisco WebEx, but we are reaching almost 100 on YouTube. We are actually very happy to find that a good number of people are interested in information security. As illustrated in the YouTube video that we asked you to watch earlier, InfoSec is very important in this era since anything can be shared online. So before we start, we would like to recognize the people tuning in to this webinar. On the chat box at the right panel of your screen, please type in your name and the agency you represent. For example, my name is Kate, and I'm currently with the Development Academy of the Philippines. Again, on the chat box at the right-hand panel of the screen, please type in your name and the agency you represent so we can get to know our audience better. So we have Mr. Marlon Gamido from Tarlac State University. Welcome po. We also have participants from Bukidnon State University. Tarlac State University. Wow, and daming taga Central Luzon. We also have Mr. Eman Johnny Emanuel from MWSS. Welcome po. I've noticed also that we have several participants from DOST and their regional offices. And of course, we also have participants from the Development Academy of the Philippines. We have Mr. Jay Castillo. We also have participants from DILG, CSC Region 10, Mr. En or Ms. Henry Fel Adlaon. So we can see that for received several registrations. We also have participants from the Academe, UP Los Banos, Luzon State University, Batangas State University, University of South Eastern Philippines. And from our international line agencies, DNR. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. So should you, uh, it, it looks like everyone is ready for the webinar. So let me just share with you a few reminders for this session. So first, for those of you who are on Cisco WebEx, make sure to mute your mic. As a precautionary measure, all of your mics are muted by default. However, accidents can happen, so always check if your mic is muted to avoid unnecessary background noise. Second, please place your phones on silent mode to avoid any distractions and focus on this webinar as we will be conducting short polls throughout the lecture. Should you have any questions at any point, feel free to type them in on the chat box at the right panel of the screen. Take note that there is a 30 to 60 second delay on the YouTube live cast, but we will make sure to accommodate everyone's questions as soon as possible. This webinar is actually a preview for our upcoming training course on information security management system on June 16 to 18, that is next month. So should you decide to join the full training course, 
let us know so we can give you a 10% discount on the course training fees. So the objectives of this webinar are for you to understand the concept of information security, appreciate the importance of an ISMS or information security management system, and recall the steps in implementing an ISMS. To ensure that these objectives are met, we have engaged a very capable resource person and expert in information security. He is an information security professional specializing in the areas of information risk management and information security development and implementation. He is currently the practice leader for IT governance and ISO 27001 or information security management system. He has over 30 years of experience and expertise as a consultant in information security, business continuity, and IT management systems. He has been enhancing his knowledge and skills for development and implementation of information security standards and practices locally and abroad. Ladies and gentlemen, let us please welcome Mr. Teodoro Ted Ramirez. Hello and good morning sa inyong lahat. Welcome dito sa ating session regarding information security o yung tinatawag na ISMS, Information Security Management System. Today, malalaman ninyo kung paano sa simpleng paraan magtayo ng isang ISMS compliant dun sa ISO 27001. Now, just like uh, sinabi ni Kate, in case meron kayong questions, feel free lang na isulat ninyo sa chat box yan. Later on, at the end of the session, nasagutin natin yung hat ng kaya natin sagutin ng mga tanong ninyo. Now, start up. Information security, isang bagay na matagal nang hinahanap ng maraming organisasyon. Information security is actually an important process for an organization. It is responsible for protecting the information against mga bagay na makakasama at makakasakit sa information na pinaghahawakan ng organisasyon ninyo. Basic information security practices ay nagagawa na ng ibang mga organizations. Yan ay tulad ng ginagawa araw-araw ng inyong IT, kung meron kayo. Parang yung antivirus software ni, o yung firewall, kung meron kayong firewall. Certain policies tulad nung bawal gumamit ng USB are actually security controls under the helm of information security. So the practice of information security is to provide or establish controls, measures, para walang masamang manyari, hindi siya ma-unauthorized access, mag-disclose ng hindi dapat, mag-disrupt, ma-modify, diba? o mawalat masira ang inyong information. Ah, yan ang tinatawag ng lahat ng mga tao ngayong panahon na infosec. But the problem, basic lang yan ng information security. Having the basic controls are the startup point of actually establishing an ISMS. Most organizations do not know what or how to implement an ISMS. Now, the importance of having an ISMS is to address risk to the organization or the agencies na pinapasukan ninyo. Because nasa digital age na tayo, malaganap ang mga masasamang manyanyari sa inyong organizational information o personal information. Baka magamit sa mali. Common naman ata ngayong panahon. Ang understanding that we have threats tulad ng hackers o mga people who commit fraud or use your information 
para sa kanilang gain. Either masaktan ka o makalamang sila. O, yan ang importansya ng paggamit ngayon o pagtayo ng ISMS. O, due to the recent technological developments, oo naman, mas vulnerable ang inyong information across the globe. Now, setting up information security is common for most companies. It's, it's an understanding na o kailangan natin protektahan ang kumpanya natin. But, we need to put a systematic process to ensure na inaalagaan yung controls na tinayunin nyo. Kada din magsabing magtayo tayo ng, mag-install tayo ng antivirus, pero kung hindi nyo aalagaan yan, na hindi naman yan magiging effective sa haba ng panahon. Hence the reason marami kayong naka-install na antivirus na hindi updated, hindi nakakahuli ng virus, o for better cases, pinapatay, gumagamit. Okay, because wow, wala yung governance. If you are wondering how to establish an ISMS, most organizations adopt the ISO publication 27001 as a baseline guide for implementing an ISMS. An ISMS or an ISO 27001 contains the specifications, the requirements of Establishing, implementing, documenting, monitoring, and continually improving an ISMS. Nakasulat na sa best practice publication na yan, internationally accepted. Paano tatakbo ng mabuti ang inyong ISMS kung kayo ay nagtagin ng isa? But, to have an ISMS or to be compliant sa ISO 27001, may mga bagay-bagay na kailangan kayong sundan o gawin doon sa publication. Now, kung kayo ay nakapagtayo ng information security management system, remember, information security is how to address risk. So kung inayos mo yung mga kusot, issues, gulo, problema na tinapasukan ng inyong kumpanya araw-araw in relation sa inyong mga operations, informations o assets na vital, critical o sensitive kumpanya. Kung inayos yan, matanggal ni ISMS ang risk, pagkakaroon ng operational effectiveness, gaganda takbo talaga. Ayaw ni ISMS ng sablay. Hence the reason nilagyan ng security measure yan. Para hindi magkaroon ng risk. Inherently, if meron kayong operational effectiveness, mababawasan yung mga Rework, overtimes, redoing mga trabaho, mare-reduce nyo loss and wasted, wastages, and magkakaroon kayo ng greater cost-effectiveness. Kasama sa requirement ng information security, ang pagsunod sa batas, sa regulasyon. So, binansya, compliance ensures na hindi kayo Magbabali ng mga legal, statutory, or contractual obligations na pinasok ninyo. Uh, therefore, avoiding unnecessary legal costs. And because pinagyan ni ASMS yan ng proteksyon para hindi kayo masaktan to a certain degree, the organization will have greater resilience. Kahit anong tumating sa pintuan ninyo na hindi maganda para sa inyo, Mapipilitan labanan yan para hindi kayo masaktan. Therefore, enhancing yung inyong image reputation sa inyong mga end users, customers, clients, partners, and other stakeholders. Enhance reputation yan. Magkakaroon sila ng trust and confidence sa inyo. This gives the organization peace of mind. Now, before we continue on our quest for learning how to do ISMS, merong maliit na poll or questions lang naman kayo. Now, I need you to answer this question. Stated here, Anna played a Facebook quiz called Only a True Genius Will Score 100% of this quiz. Choices ninyo, A, security breach by ito, or B, not a security breach. 
on your right side, makikita ninyo na meron kayong multiple choice. Please answer this in 30 seconds before we continue. Okay, time's up. <laughs> now, if you look at the question, the answer actually is A, a security breach. Dapat malaman ninyo na ngayong panahon, maraming nag-o-offer ng ganyang klase ng mga activities. Sa Facebook, sa kahit saan, kahit saan website ka pumunta. Generally, they are asking you to perform activities, but they're also asking something from you, like access to your data, access to your camera, your photos. They will ask for your name, your cell phone number, or they will ask for any other credentials na hawak ninyo. Oh, naman, di ba? Security bitch yan. Ibinibigay niyo sa mga tao hindi niyo kilala ang mga information na dapat hindi ninyo ibinigay. Uh, Unang-una, di naman yung kilala kung sino na nga nandyan. So the answer would be A, a security breach. Now, magtayo tayo ng ISMS. Eight steps lang yan para makapagtayo ng information security management system. Looks easy and you would wonder bakit hindi nila maitayo ng mabuti. <laughs> Marami ng organization ang sumubok magtayo at nahihirapan maabot yan. Hindi kasi sila nabigyan ng mabuting direksyon at guidance. The first step would be project initiation. The second would be ISMS definition. The third would be risk assessments. Fourth, risk management. Fifth, training and awareness. Sixth, preparing for the certification audit. Seventh, the actual certification audit, and eight, the promise for continual improvement. Now, first up, project initiation. Most cases, sa pagtayo ng ISMS, ay tinitreat as a project. O naman, may project team yan. So may mga tao kang i-assign para sila mag-helm nung pagtayo ng information security at pagpatakbo. Dahil tinitreat ito sa project, may project timeline yan. Which means may deadline. Pangit sa project team yung open-ended. Which means wala na katapusan at hindi na nyo makikita kung nakatayo ng ISMS ninyo. <laughs> but the project management committee or the project management team requires support from the business. The senior management. Sa senior management kasi nanggagaling ang pagbigay ng direksyon ang pagbigay ng mga resources needed para tumakbo effectively yung Pagbigay ng authorities and approvals, including decisions kung yung tinatayo ng team ay mabuti para sa kumpanya o hindi. Remember, the ISMS ay kailangan maitayo base sa tinatayoan ng organisasyon nyo. Paano kayo tumakbo at anong servisyo ang binibigay nyo. So, first up, Itayo natin yung governing office na yan. Second, the ISMS definition. Bakit natin dinedefine ang ISMS kung saan natin ini-implement? You see, kapag mag-implement ka ng ISMS, lalo na for ISO 27001, you must specify kung ano ang target. Sino ba magpapa-ISMS? Most cases, sinasabi ng iba, Tara, head office na lang. Huwag muna yung mga regional offices. Pwede yan eh, di ba? Or you can say, head office including all the 300 regional offices. Pwede rin yun. A decision has to be made but it must be clearly recorded and documented and approved by the business. We need a scoping document which states the objective, scope, the limits, interfaces, dependencies, exclusions and justifications, kasama at hindi, and kung ano itong kumpanyang ito, ano ang laman niya, kultura niya, ano ang kanyang mga produkto, serbisyo at mga proseso. Yan nililinaw yan. 
some organizations actually even take a smaller scope like Tara, si IT na lang ang pae sa mes natin. In the end, na certified lang si IT. But then again, it's not recommended to make the scope maliit because uh, an ISMS is a holistic practice. Because information nga naman sa isang kumpanya ay bumabiyahe end to end. But this clarifies kung ano ang magiging responsibility, accountability, ng mga magtatayo ng ISMS. Now, Kapag tinayo mo ang ISMS, importante na mag-risk assess muna kayo. Ang sinasabi ng mga practitioner, risk is the genesis of your security control. Diyan ang galing yung security control nyo. Kung hindi kayo mag-risk assess, hindi nyo alam kung sino ang kalaban nyo. The risk assessment will give you a picture of yung mga threats na hinaharap ng kumpanya na makakasakit sa inyo. Yung makakasama sa organization ninyo. Risk assessments must be performed in order for you to know what your risk landscape is. So, risk assessment gives you the opportunity to identify the requirements security requirements of the organization. It gives you the capability to assess, evaluate the consequences, yung sakit na may bibigay nitong mga risk sa inyong organization. And lastly, dahil meron kayong documented risk assessment, you will now be given the ability to decide what you intend to do sa risk ninyo. Important assessment. No matter of fact, kung wala yan, hindi mo lang kung tama ang tinatayo nyo. Now, if you have performed the risk assessment, it is important that you, after deciding what to do, manage the risk. The actions that are recommended to address the risk ay aapat lang. You have the option of Risk reduction, risk acceptance, risk avoidance, or risk transfer. Pero ito lang yan. Kung meron ka nakitang risk, the organization must decide by recommendation and proposal whether you should reduce, accept, avoid, or transfer the risk. Reduce meaning, pawasan natin yung sakit na maibibigay niyan o yung dalas na mananyari sa atin yan. Accept, ibig sabihin, kung masasaktan tayo niyan, tanggapin na natin yung sakit para maramdaman na natin, wala na tayo magawa about it. Definitely needs management approval. Avoid. Kung yan, yung mga critical assets natin o information, nasa lugar na maraming risk, tanggalin mo yan doon. Ilipat mo sa lugar with no or lesser risk. And then forget transfer. Kaya nga may insurance company. Kaya nga, pag nasunog kayo, iba ang nagbabayad nung nawala sa inyo. So, risk transfer. Transferring the risk accountability to a third-party entity. After you make that proposal, is a sign-off ni management yan, senior management. And then, mabibigyan ngayon yung ISMS team ng opportunity to implement the security controls based on the approved action na Inayagan ng inyong organization. Now, in-approve na lahat ng inyong recommended actions at sinalang mo na lahat ng security measures necessary to address the risk sa inyong risk assessment base sa recommended mo na action. So, kung sinabi mong, ah, meron tayong risk ng virus sa ating mga desktop, lagyan natin ng antivirus to reduce the risk. O, di o pa yun. The problem after developing and implementing controls is trying to tell people na meron tayong controls. Training and awareness ang importante naman dyan. Training was intended to help educate and make all your ISMS roles responsible entities competent to perform their jobs and their duties in support of the ISMS and security program. The awareness campaign is used para people will know kung paano nila proactively will support yung kanilang mga security controls na sinalang. 
kailangan alam ng mga tao about risk. Alam nila how to protect themselves and what they have to protect the organization. Naturally, if you have a training program and an awareness campaign, which most ISO and actually do have on a yearly basis, you need to identify necessary skills para mabigyan ng tamang training, competency nga, yung mga taong tutulong magpaganda ng tabi ng awareness, bigay ng training ng mabuti, i-evaluate kung naibigay ng mabuti yung training and awareness, and don't forget to maintain records, proof na sila ay natikin. Yan ng training and education. Now, pag naisalang mo na yan, ikonting eh, panahon bago makapag-adjust yung kultura ng mga kasama nyo sa opisina para masanay sa control sa nilagay nyo. Kawa kayo ng maraming policies, physical controls, saka technological controls na dahan-dahan, through training and awareness, malalaman nila kung paano supportahan. Now comes the time where you will prepare for the certifying or the certification audit. Preparing for audit means that the ISMS team must perform activities mandatory to show compliance to the ISO 27001. This will include documentation control, management reviews, internal audit, and corrective and preventive actions. These activities ensure na yung ISMS na tinayo ninyo ay nakatayo, tumatakbo, at bagay para sa inyong kumpanya. Lalo-lalo na kung effective to para sa organization o sa agency ninyo. Ah, preparing for audit yun. It will take some time bago makasigurado yung ISMS team na handa na kayong humarap sa certification audit. Then the day comes na tatawag na kayo ng certifying body. Ito na yung certification audit. Certification process takes two stages. One would be the documentation audit. Stage 1 yan. That audit, depending on the size ng scope na dineclare nyo earlier, remember the scope, the definition, might take 3 to 4 days. Oh, probably shorter kung maliit lang naman o maliit ang inyong organization. The documentation audit takes you into a check and a review of all documents and records na meron kayo na itinayo sa ilalim ng ISMS ninyo. Papasahin ng auditor lahat yan. At the end of this stage, bibigyan kayo ng findings report at bibigyan kayo ng pagkakataon ayusin yan by the auditor before pumunta siya sa stage 2. Once in ayos ninyo, implementation audit naman ang next agenda. Stage 2, or implementation audit, is a physical audit, an implementation audit. The auditor will perform oculars, walkthroughs, and even testing of your controls to see kung yung mga implementation ninyo sa real world ay bumabangga sa documentation na ginawa ninyo earlier. So dapat hindi pa puwang yun. Yung ginagawa nyo, di paperwork yun. <laughs> Ganun lang yon. Kung ginagawa nyo, isulat ninyo. It's a simple thing. At the end of stage 2, implementation audit, bibigyan na naman kayo ng finding report yan. Paayos sa inyo ng auditor yan. Now, ang kagandahan dito is kung konti lang ang findings, i-recommend na kayo for certification by the certifying body. Which means, umasa na kayo at certified na kayo. Pero, kung binigyan kayo ng report, at umalis sa mga auditor sa inyong organization na hindi nag-recommend, may problema tayo. Ibig sabihin, hindi kayo compliant. But, certified body will give you a maximum of 6 months to fix lahat ng pagkukulang process sa report para kayo ay pumasa. So, may pagkakataon pang ayusin yan. Uh, pag lumang pa sa 6 months, bayad kayo ulit. General. <laughs> Now, let's take another short poll or quiz. Diba? Again, we have the questions. Okay. Which of the following is a goal of risk assessment? Ah. A, to identify the necessary qualification staff. B, to make decisions on how to manage the risk. C, 
to ascertain whether the approach used by management allows for the improvement of the framework in place or D, all of the above. Check your right hand panel and please answer yung ating short poll in 30 seconds. Yes. Now, ito simple lang. Kaya ka nga nag risk assessment eh. Kasi kailangan mo malaman kung anong gagawin mo sa mga risk na meron ka sa kumpanya. So, be ang sagot to make decisions on how to manage the risk. Like I mentioned, the risk assessment will give you a picture of your risk landscape. Therefore, giving you the ability to decide what to do in Saris Nayon based on its impact and its probability. Sagot is B. Now, kapag kayo ay pumasa sa certification, ISO 27001, merong kasamang pangako yan. Ang ating ISO, hindi yan fire and forget tulad ng ginagawa ng ibang mga kumpanya. Hindi yung tinayo mo ngayon and then next year kalimutan na natin. It doesn't work that way. The certification auditor will return every year for a surveillance audit. They will check kung yung system na tinayo ninyo ay pinapatakbo ninyo, pinapaganda ninyo at inaalagaan ninyo. Gusto nila ma-validate kung kayo ay continually ini-improve yung inyong security programs, yung governance office, at yung controls na sinalang nyo. Continual improvement means you need to improve on a regular basis the policies, your objectives and targets, the processes for reviewing, and for auditing to improve the organization by addressing events and incidents and by implementing corrective actions pag may mga kailangan ayusin na mga incidents. Yan. O pagpukulang. Continual improvement is an important part of the life cycle of implementing an ISMS. Every year, babalik ang auditor. Pag hindi nakita ng auditor na meron kayong continual improvement, huhugutin nila yung certificate sa organization ninyo at bibigyan na naman kayo ng magkakataon, ayos eh, yung pagpukulang. Which means, being certified is a non-stop race to the finish line. Walang finish line as a matter of fact. Now, whether you are certified or not, yes, I say message is important to an organization. Maraming organizations ang inadapt yung practice ng ISO 27001. Pero hindi sila nagpapa-certify, believing that the best practice document can help them, help protect their organization naman kasi. So, ginagawa nung iba yun. This certification program is totally voluntary. Unless pinamandate ito ng inyong mga stakeholders and partners and customers and clients. Hihihi talaga nila yan hinahanap o minamandate by batas. Which currently, everybody knows, meron tayong mandate to get you certified for ISO 27001, just like the ISO 9001, quality management. Yeah. All right. Given that, whether you are certified or not, it is your responsibility na alagaan at patakbuhin niya na mabuti and ensure effectivity niyan. Inspections and updates must be performed regularly, hindi nyo iniiwan. And remember, perform regularly yung inyong mga reviews, risk assessments, because security is a field that is forever changing. The next is say, stay the same way. So, do we have any questions regarding implementing an information security management system. Please pakisulat dun sa inyong right side chat panel para ma-address natin yan. I leave this to Kate to tell us kung ano yung question.
Thank you for the informative presentation, Sir Ted. So before we start our open forum, we would like to recognize the presence of one of the members of the DAP Board of Trustees, uh, CS CSE Chairman, Ms. Alicia Bala, and the Senior Vice President for Programs in DAP, Ms. Magdalena L. Mendoza. Thank you for attending the webinar. Thank if you, you have any questions, please type them at the chat box at the right panel of the screen. If you are on YouTube, please type them at the chat area, also located at the right-hand panel of the screen. You can ask any questions regarding implementation, cost, scope, or the certification. Yeah. Feel free to ask. Okay, so I think we have a question from Mikel Rivera. And the question was posted on YouTube. Yes. So his question is, the certification is market driven. For government, what is the value adding, lalo na if ISO certified? Magandang tanong yan. But then again, ISO certified must be specified. Um, because one ISO does not mean na certified na kayo sa lahat ng ISO. Each specific publication only addresses a specific discipline of the business. And to be honest about it, majority sa inyo ay ISO certified sa quality management system, 9001, which addresses naman quality of services and products ng organization ninyo. But it does not emphasize on protecting you from risk, lalo na risk regards to your information. Now, alam niyo may Data Privacy Act. Yung mga practitioners, implementers niyan, para makuha yung program for complying with that, ginagamit nila yung ISO 27001. Because it addresses all information, not one kind. Personal information is only one kind. Kasi. So, it is market-driven. In our case, sa ating government, it is mandated actually by the government natin that you do have an ISO two kinds for 9001 and 27001. I think my executive order yan shared to everybody. Now, depending on the nature of the agency or the operations, organization, some of you nila require magkaroon ng business continuity naman. ISO 22301 naman yun. Kung sa iba sa inyo, nire-require talaga yun. So, sa atin, dinidrive yan ng need ng ating country para support lahat ng ating kababahan. Thank you very much, Sir Ted. We also have another question from YouTube. The username is Friends Marielle Nogoy. And her question is, thanks, Sir Ted. As a university institution, what are the possible risks involved in InfoSec? Ah. Educational, to. correct. All right. The risks here are related to educational programs and projects. The risk here is also personally identifiable information ng mga students ninyo at yung mga next of kin ng mga students ninyo, including yung mga faculty, siyempre. Now, there are schools that are competing with one another. Alam ko yan, kasi gumawa na ako ng schools. Sabi nung isang school, yung programs natin, kinukopya nung kabilang school. O naman, di ba? Ganun pala kayo importante yun eh. So, maraming risk-related yan. 
naturally, depende sa inyong organization ulit, you need to identify yung mga risk na yan. Hindi kasi kayo pare-pareho. Not because one <laughs> educational agency is the same with you, means pareho yung risk. Uh, you have to identify specifics of how your organization works. Okay, thank you, Sir Ted. Another question, galing po sa YouTube from Michael Casas. How will the certification proceed now that we are on lockdown? Ah, maganda yan. Oh, currently, currently, we are all in lockdown. And for better understanding, I'm share ko lang sa inyo, Maraming projects uh, to achieve compliance sa ISO. Medyo naka, naka-suspend muna. Naka-suspend muna. Because the projects, or like 27,001, needs the operation to be back to normal. Uh, para ma-understand niyo yung correct implementation. Now, now some, some implementers realize this is a good opportunity na to establish the right security controls. Because currently, we are in a disaster, or we have a pandemic around, which is very good for information security at saka si business continuity. Ah. Now, information security, siyempre, wants to make sure yung safety ng mga tao, yung safety ng organization. So, kahit sa gitna nitong disaster nito, lalagyan pa rin niya ito ng mga security measures para hindi lalo makasama sa kanila yung current situation. Oh, Ganun din yun, same concept. In most cases naman, some organizations do use this opportunity to strengthen diba? yung kanilang mga security measures. All right. Thank you for explaining, Sir Ted. Now, do we have any more questions? So far, that was the last question received from our YouTube chat. Do we have any questions here on the Cisco application? Okay, so we have a question from Florena Samiano. As per experience ano po ang common findings during audit implementation malaking factor ba ang reliability of the internet connection or server used by the organization ano ang minimum requirement for us to be able to become iso certified lagi certain minimum that's a good question <laughs> see if you adapt an ISO, the ISO actually has by, by default new standard. It has 10 clauses, 10 clauses. Basically, if you have 9001, ka, you have 10 clauses that you need to ensure by pakita mo sa auditor na you implement niyo. Remember, the standards contain specifications, hindi the how-to. The how-to ay nasa kamay ninyo, di ba? Sasabihin lang ng standard, Eto, magandang gawin sa inyo, papala mo gagawin yun. Okay. So, what is minimum? Again, yung nakalagay sa standard baso sa hinihingi niya. O, tama yun. Pero kung gano'ng karami yung gagawin mo, ah, nasa sa inyo na yun. <laughs> sa inyo na yun. Now, to give you a better direction lang, the 27001, the 27001, has, labas pa dun sa sampung mandatory requirements. 114 security objectives na kailangan nila makitang maitayo nyo. Yun ang challenge nung ibang mga implementers. Kaya na-overwhelm sila sa pagtayo ng ISMS. It's not impossible and we never told you to make it perfect. What again is okay na sa inyo as a protection, whatever form is your baseline minimum. Okay ka na ron. Okay, sir, but what are the common findings during audit implementation? Ah, and is the internet connection or the server being used 
a huge factor in implementing an ISMS? I, ISMS is non-IT specific, which means the internet does not play a huge factor. Naturally, if you have internet access organization, dapat may mga security measures ka to protect you from the internet at yung risk coming from the internet. O, o dadami lang yung controls. Pero, kung wala naman kayong internet, I prefer to be offline, hindi masama yun, hindi bawal yun, at hindi naman yan na hanapin ng auditor. Papasa pa rin kayo ng 27001. O naman, kasi hindi naman yun ang context ng business ng organization. So, pwede yun. Servers, kung meron kayong server, naturally hahanapin ng auditor ng mga security controls to protect the server. Pero kung wala naman kayong server, eh di wala, hindi naman kayo pipilitin yung auditor na magtayo kayo ng server. Hindi nila gagawin yun. <laughs> hindi nila gagawin yun. So, again, it doesn't really play that much of a major non-IT specific. Common Sir Ted, and... Yeah, yeah they're rela- mostly their documentation. To be honest about it, their documentation and the awareness. Yung bang alam ng mga employees na kasama ninyo, meron kayong security controls. Tulad ng tanong yung may katabi mo. Sabi mo, pare, meron ba tayong policy na bawal gumamit na USB? Meron ba? Hindi <laughs> niya alam eh, no? Yun ang problema doon. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for answering that question. Now, we also have another question sent by PDO. The question is, what are the resources needed to implement an ISMS? More or less, how much do we need to implement an ISMS? Good question. Well, resources were in, in, in the practice of implementing ISMS, hindi naman nila mandate, lalo na no publication, mag-acquire kayo ng maraming resources. So matter of fact, physical assets or technology. Hindi nila nilipot. Well, definitely, uh, you need people to run the office. The security governing office. Oh, so resource-wise, you need people. People who will help you become the ikanga magpupulis regarding the controls at walang masamang manyari sa inyo. At kapag meron, huhulihin nila. So, resource na usapan, nandun tayo sa tao. Ang gamitan, nasa di, sa, sa inyong discretion yun. Kasi kayo magre-recommend. If you believe na kailangan natin ng firewall pag na tayo nakadikit sa internet, eh, pa-recommend mo yung firewall. But you will justify yung cost-benefits niyan based on the results of the risk assessment. Ay. Now, the second question is regarding the cost. Cost of certification, correct, Kate? Yes, sir. How ah, much yeah. daw po will they be spending? Okay. The certification audit is kinokos yan based on the scope. That's why it's important that you document the scope ng implementation niyo. Now, for a small office, small organization, lagay natin 20 to 30 people. Okay, lagay natin, hindi kaya lalapas sa 50 people. At isa lang yung office. Assuming na gano'n yun. Roughly around four, five hundred thousand. Well, nah, depending naman yah, marami naman ng offer. Ang cost for certification that would give you a three-year cycle para sa audit. So three years sila mag-audit. Mga ba naman? Term. Now, the bigger the scope, the larger the cost. So if you decide to have Ala, I want two, three regional offices and the head office. Oh, de, syempre, they will compute for everything else, including the Mondays na biyahe at yung expenses para sa biyahe at gastos na incurred. Doon, sa pag-check uh, lang at pag-audit. Sa Thank you, Sir Ted. We hope we were able to answer that question. Now, we have two related questions here from PSA Aklan and from Mikel Rivera. The questions are, 
are all information in the organization needed to be secured or merong mga info na hindi kailangan is secure how about public information does it need any more protecting for ted good question hindi pare-pareho lahat ng organization and the reason you perform risk assessments is for you to discover ano ang important information sa inyo. There are truly information important sa inyo. And there are truly hindi naman. Lalo na items or information that you share sa public. You don't care, okay lang share sa lahat. But hindi mo sinasabi lang yun. You have to assess which ones ang dapat. This is the reason the Information Security Office, the organization, creates a classification policy to identify which information is which. Which ones are critical, sensitive, confidential, secret, and which ones are internal use for public. Diba? So, nasa sa inyo yun to decide. Oh, pero iba-iba yan. Now, Hindi naman just because lahat yan, wala ng control. Kunyari, lahat yan, open. Hindi naman din yan. That's why it's important to perform a risk assessment. Because you need to know kung baka meron, baka actually, baka pag nagdamit sa hindi dapat yan, bumalik sa inyo yan, at kayo ang masakitan. Pag-aralan ninyo na mag Okay, thank you, Sir Ted. We uh, we have another question from Tirso Cruz, artista bato. Oh, this is yeah. from YouTube, yes, from the YouTube chat. During this time when most transactions are online, like most people are working from home, what are some basic security measures that we can implement at home? Sir Ted. Uh, Yes. Yeah, marami nang pumatok sa issue na yan. Currently, kasi dahil may crisis tayo, maraming work at home. Oo oh, naman. Right but, as a matter of fact, work at home is part of the 114 controls of the ISO 27001. Surprisingly, it is part of it. Which means teleworking controls and mobile computing are actually part of the requirements. Kailangan ma-establish ninyo yung policies at saka mga supporting uh, guidelines and uh, operational processes on how to apply work at home, teleworking, and mobile computing in your organization. Okay, you need to establish that. This is a good opportunity, like I mentioned earlier, na makita ninyo ay kailangan pala yan. You need to perform risk assessment on how people work remotely, work at home, di ba? And then provide the controls that you believe is important or effective to address risk while they are working remotely. Hey, yo. Uh, yun yung okay, thank you, Sir Ted. In the interest of time, we will now be uh, answering just one more question. Don't worry. If you're, you have uh, raised questions, we will make sure to answer them by email. And uh, the last question is from Sir Ronaldo. His question is, distance learning platforms are flourishing nowadays as we are about to migrate to a new normal situation in the academe. Are there any free applications or softwares currently proliferating that are safe to use? Can these be threats in the organization's data or information security, Sir Ted? Okay, magandang tanong. Unang-una, there is no true free platform. Unang-una man yan. Some will give you a demo or a free platform with really basic and secure, and secure as sabi ko, ah, uh, usage. Y yun yung problema doon. So, if the question later on was about threats, oo naman, maraming risk yun. Yun ang problem with dealing with free software, di ba? Open vulnerability yun. Wala accountability yun eh. Now, preferably, again, part of its security is 
the 114 controls, is selecting the right software, tools, and supplier. Kailangan pag-aralan ninyo kung uh, what degree ang security practices naman nung bibilhan ninyo or security control sa kasama sa bibilhin ninyo o gagamitin ninyo. Huwag kayo kuha ng kuha gamit ng gamit. Kailangan yung security office ninyo, yung information security office, pag-aralan muna yung tool or yung supplier ng tool kung sila ay may mga security measures in place with regards sa use ng kanila. Kung wala, huwag mo pipilitin. Tumingin ka na sa iba. Doon mang kagaling yung butas later on. At remember, hindi lahat ng mga gagawa ng masama ay nasa Pilipinas. Di ba nasa ato? Just to, make, just to be sure of that. Alright, and that's the last question for our webinar on ISMS. Thank you so much, Sir Ted, for answering all of those questions. Now to our participants, if you wish to gain the skills and knowledge needed in the implementation of an ISMS, you may join our three-day training course on June 16 to 18. We shall be giving a 10% early bird discount to those who can register this week and next week. After this webinar, we shall also share with you the registration link via email. So that ends our online learning session on ISMS. We hope you had a fun, enjoyable, and enriching experience. Before we say goodbye, please help us improve the delivery of our webinars in the Academy by answering a post-webinar evaluation form. You can now use your mobile phones to scan the QR code shown on the screen. So it will lead you to a link, a Google form for the post webinar evaluation form. Certificates of attendance will be given to those who will accomplish the evaluation form. We also have the attendance of the participants here on Cisco WebEx and on YouTube. So, uh, Sir Ted, any last words? Well, I think this is a good time para mag-realize ko yung staff talaga community. I hope, hope that you try to embark on this journey of protecting yung inyong organization and therefore protecting yung sarili nyo. Even during these times of crisis, yun naman. Sama naman dapat nga yan sa information security. Protect ang kami dapat nga. So, again, Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat and stay safe. On behalf of the Productivity and Development Center of the Development Academy of the Philippines, Sir Ted and I would like to thank all of you for attending this webinar. Maraming salamat po. Muchas gracias. Merci. Shukran. <laughs> Nagre-require ng permission yung barcode, QR code.
as YouTube 160 something and then sa Cisco we had 52 53 so around mga ganun 200 200 plus na participants po